golden afternoon, late in the summer, Alice sat next to her sister on the bank of a rippling river, looking out at the sunlit spires of Oxford. The whole world felt sleepy. The river was flowing slowly past, and the long grass whispered in the breeze as though it was saying, shh, time for bed. Alice felt sleepy too. Her sister was too busy reading a book to pay any attention. Alice peeped into the book, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the point of a book, Alice thought, without pictures or conversations? The heat was making her eyes drop and she was wondering whether she had the energy to make a daisy chain when a white rabbit with large ears ran past. There was nothing strange about that, but it was a little strange that the rabbit could talk. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, said the rabbit. Run! And stranger still, it actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it. Yeah! Alice chased the rabbit across the field and saw it pop down a large rabbit hole. Alice dived down the rabbit hole too. Wow! <laughs> the rabbit hole was like a tunnel at first. But then Alice found herself falling down a very deep well. Holy moly! She fell very slowly. So she had plenty of time to look around her. The sides of the well were filled with cupboards, bookshelves and pictures. Down, down she fell. She began to think she might fall through the very middle of the earth. Thump! <laughs> Down she came on a heap of dry leaves. Alice jumped to her feet. She could see the white rabbit hurrying down away the long passageway ahead of her, muttering, Oh my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting! The rabbit disappeared around a corner and Alice found herself in a hall with doors all around it. Yippee! She tried one, then another, but every door was locked. She wasn't sure how she'd ever get out again. Then she saw a little glass table with a little golden key on top. Holy moly! The key was too small to open any of the doors. But then she saw a tiny door she didn't notice before. She tried the golden key in the lock. It opened at once. Woohoo! Alice knelt down and peered through the little door. On the other side was the loveliest garden she'd ever seen. She stood up and went back to the glass table. She found a little bottle that hadn't been there before. Cheapers creepers! Round the neck of the bottle was a label with the words Drink Me printed on it. The bottle wasn't marked poison, so she drank a little. It tasted like cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee and hot buttered toast. Holy moly! What a curious feeling, said Alice. She felt like her whole body was folded in on itself, like a telescope. She was getting smaller and smaller. At last, she was the right size to go through the little door and into the lovely garden. Uh -huh. She tried the handle, but it was locked again. And she had left the little key on the glass table. Now she couldn't reach it, and the glass table legs were too slippery to climb. Run! 
she sat down defeated. But then she noticed a very small cake under the table with the words eat me spelled on top in raisins. <laughs> she ate the cake immediately started to grow taller again but she didn't stop growing when she was back to her normal size she kept getting bigger and bigger until her head hit the ceiling cheapers creepers alice started to cry but because she was so big her tears formed a large pool around her she heard a pattering of feet coming towards her it was the white rabbit excuse me she said but when the rabbit saw her it scurried off again terrified then alice noticed the little glass bottle she managed to pick it up between her thumb and forefinger there was a tiny bit of liquid left so she swallowed it down and she began to shrink again at once soon she was so small that she was up to her chin in her own tears so she must have got really small <laughs> i wish i hadn't cried so much said alice as she swam about she heard something splashing about in the pool a little way off there were all sorts of creatures mice and eagles and dodos <laughs> swimming away from her run she followed them to a grassy shore alice was wondering which way to go next when she came across a large mushroom <laughs> a caterpillar was sitting on it who are you said the caterpillar in a sleepy voice who are you not sure said alice i knew who i was when i got up this morning but i keep getting bigger than smaller it's quite confusing yeah please can you help me the caterpillar yawned and crawled off the mushroom muttering one side will make you grow taller and the other side will make you grow shorter. Woohoo! What side of what? thought Alice. Yeah! Of the mushroom, said the caterpillar, as if she had spoken aloud. Alice snibbled a piece from the left hand side of the mushroom, and her neck began to stretch. Until she could see above the treetops. Holy moly! She noticed a cat sitting in a tree. So she ate a bit of the right side of the mushroom and shrank back down again. Maybe the cat will be able to talk, she thought. <laughs> the cat was very large and it was grinning from ear to ear. Please, would you tell me, said Alice, a little timidly, why you smile like that? Yeah! Because I'm a Cheshire cat, <laughs> said the cat, as though that explained everything. Aha! And would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? In that direction, said the cat, waving its right paw around. <laughs> Run! lifts a hatter and in that direction waving the other paw lifts a march hair they're both mad but then we're all mad here i'm mad and you're mad blimey how do you know i'm mad said alice you must be said the cat or you wouldn't have come here liar liar pants on fire now you are playing croquet with the queen today i haven't been invited she said you'll see me there said the cat and vanished slowly beginning with the end of the tail and ending with a grin he <laughs> soon alice came to the march hare's house there was a table set out under a tree and the march hare 
and the hatter, who was wearing a very large hat, was having tea. A dormouse was sitting between them, fast asleep, and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it. Yippee! The table was large, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room! No room! They cried out when they saw Alice coming. Liar, liar, pants on fire! There's plenty of room, said Alice. Yeah! And she sat down in a large armchair. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Asked the hatter. <coughs> I like riddles, said Alice. She tried to work it out, but eventually she said, I give up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the hatter. Let's wake the dormouse up. He poured tea on the dormouse's nose. <laughs> the dormouse woke up and started to sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. Up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky. Alice was getting more and more confused. Yeah! You're all talking nonsense, she cried. She stood up and walked away. And when she looked back, the hatter and the march hare were trying to put the dormouse in the teapot. Holy moly! Alice walked on again, frustrated and lost, until she found herself in a beautiful garden she'd seen through the tiny door, back when her adventure began. Aha! At the entrance of the garden was a large rose tree. <laughs> The roses growing on it were white, but the three gardeners were painting them red. The gardens had human heads and arms and legs, but their bodies were made of playing cards. Blimey! Watch out, Five, said Two. Don't splash paint on me. Why are you painting these roses? Alice asked timidly. Yeah! Why, we're supposed to plant a red rose tree, said Two, and we planted a white one by mistake. If the queen finds out, she'll cut our heads off. <laughs> At that moment, Five called out, the queen, the queen, <laughs> and the gardeners threw themselves flat on their faces. A procession was winding through the garden towards them. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. Next came the white rabbit checking his watch. Then, last of all, the king and queen of hearts. The queen stopped in front of Alice. What is your name, child? she asked. Alice, your majesty, said Alice. You'll join us for croquet, said the queen. Yes, please, said Alice. Yeah! Alice had never seen such a strange game. The players were trying to hit balls, which were hedgehogs with mallets, which were flamingos. Blimey! There didn't seem to be any rules. And in a very short time, the queen was in a furious temper, pointing at people and shouting, Off with his head! <laughs> or off with her head! Jeepers creepers! Just then, Alice heard a trumpet blast. She turned to see the white rabbit holding a scroll of parchment. It's time for the trail, he cried. Who's on trial? Asked Alice, but nobody answered. The king and queen led the way to the courthouse. They sat on their thrones and a great crowd of animals gathered around them, along with a whole pack of cards. As Alice looked around, she felt a familiar sensation. She was growing again. Holy moly! 
The king looked up at Alice, who was now as tall as the room. Yeah! Rule 42. He said, all persons more than a mile high have to leave the court. Can you imagine being a mile high? Wow! I'm not a mile high, said Alice. Hold your tongue, said the queen. Turn and purple. I won't, said Alice. Yeah! Up with her head, the queen shouted. Cheapers, creepers! But before the gods could take her away, Alice cried, You're nothing but a pack of cards. Yeah! All at once, the pack of cards rose up into the air and whirled around. Alice closed her eyes, and when she opened them, she was lying on the riverbank again, with her head in her sister's lap. Awesome! Wake up, Alice dear, said her sister. What a long sleep you've had. I've had such a curious dream, Alice said, and told her sister all about it. The end!